Listen, Linda, listen. I do admit that Sasuke and Sakura make a sexy-ass couple and could have been all that and a bag of chips, but canon-wise, Sasu Saku just makes me run for the hills because it's so toxic. Sasu Saku is the type of couple where the man gets tired and settles down with a woman he doesn't even like, and the woman is delusional enough to pretend that he either loves her or will someday love her, especially if she gives him kids, which, by the way, is the worst way to hook a man. Heyo! Welcome to Day Day Does, a channel where you returning sparkling individuals get to watch me draw and talk about fandom slash storytelling things. And for those of you new here, welcome! I hope everyone is surviving and thriving in these very difficult and uh, weird times. I know I'm trying to. So this is it y'all. This is the video that I have been so excited to upload. Were these the 2010s, I would have had like a PowerPoint presentation ready with sources in the footnotes and printed copies ready to hand out to the whole class to better make my point clear and understandable. Of course, back then I was more disappointed by Sasuke rather than contemptuously unimpressed. I also think I probably would have accepted the Sasu Saku pairing because what did high school day day know about love at that stage of her life? As it stands now, I've grown as both a person and a storyteller and one of my favorite things to focus on when crafting stories are characters and their relationships with each other, both in the platonic sense and romantic one. This leads me to look at the Naruto manga written and illustrated by Masashi Kishimoto with the help of his editors with a critical eye as a writer and lover of character relationships. I won't actually give the anime produced by Studio Periot too much stock in my analysis and breakdown, which shocks many individuals who are mostly familiar with Naruto via the anime, but seeing as Studio Periot is the worst production anime company for manga writers to pair up with, trust me, that's a video for another time. And the fact that because of them, Naruto is pretty much 60% filler with an obvious heavy bias of favoring Hinata, which wouldn't be a big deal if it wasn't at the expense of other characters, particularly Sakura. It's for the best if we, mostly I, get to the truth of the matter from the original source material. And the truth that I'm referring to is that the canon pairing of Sasuke and Sakura is the worst, most toxic, do not recommend as couple goals to impressionable youngsters, canon pairing of the entire Naruto-verse. Naruhina being second in my humble opinion, of course. Refer to this video to see what I mean. Warning, if you have not read the manga or watched the Naruto anime series or read the synopsis of the entire plot, then be warned that there will be spoilers up ahead in this video, so turn back now while you still can. If you don't care, then let's continue. For those of you who don't know me, my favorite female character in Naruto is Sakura Haruno. I imprinted on this girl when I first watched the series when I was 13 years old. The show blew me away and left such an impact on me creatively that it was one of the many influences that steered me toward a career of illustration and comic making. I even wanted to be a manga artist because of Naruto. Of course, I I've learned the realities of being a manga artist in Japan and have since decided on another route to put in a similar vein for myself. But when I first saw Sakura Haruno, I thought the same thing Naruto did when he first saw her, that she was a cute girl. And considering the minuscule amount of female characters available in Naruto, I latched on to that girl like a cold glass of water in the desert. Plus, I found her hair color perfect. As a result, I was a huge Sakura stan and I lived for any and all scenes when she appeared. Any goals that she had as a character, I supported all the way. I was particularly like Naruto in that he would do anything for her at the cost of his own feelings, which means that at the time, what Sakura wanted, Sakura would get, as much as a fan had power to make that happen. In this case, Sakura had wanted Sasuke, so in my mind's eye, she would get Sasuke because look how much she loves him, and they were so cute together. And who cares if Sasuke showed little to zero interest in her? Who cares if there were better candidates out there for her? Who cares that her self-esteem is constantly shredded by Sasuke? Sasuke is hot, and he'll eventually realize his feelings for her because hello, Naruto as her end game seemed so boring to a 13 year old day day who dreamed of romances and handsome boys with emotional maturity. So yes, I'm admitting that I was once a hardcore Sasu Saku fan. And you would think I would be kind of satisfied with the ending of Naruto and Sasu Saku in Boruto, but honestly, I am truly horrified. I could have maybe not cared as much if Kishimoto or Studio Periot had given me a pink haired child, but as per usual, apparently that's too much to ask. And now here we are, a brutally honest analysis of Sasuke and Sakura as a parent and why it's toxic and only to be shipped after understanding why canon-wise it doesn't work. So let's begin. 
From the evidence that I've gathered, i.e. not mentioning who the man Sasuke is that wants to kill, not seeing why he wanted to participate in the prelims, the rooftop tantrum, his desire as to why he wants to leave Konoha for Orochimaru, Sakura just doesn't seem to understand who Sasuke is as a person. She doesn't understand his motivation of becoming stronger or why he is the way he is. In fact, Sakura does not know anything about Sasuke's past all throughout their Genin days. There is a brief moment where Sasuke tells Sakura about his desire to kill Itachi during the bell test, but she's just confused about it and doesn't ask any follow-up questions even after the bell test is over. That topic is never revisited again with her. She never makes any overtures to ask Sasuke about himself. I can concede that she keeps asking Sasuke out on dates, and on these dates, maybe she would have asked the question needed to get to know him, but as it stands, she should have found other ways of intelligence gathering. I believe the most she knows about Sasuke is that he is from the Uchiha clan and that he wants to kill a certain man and needs to be stronger to do so. I would like to think logic and context clues would dictate our girl Sakura's thinking about why Sasuke is the only Uchiha or wonder about the mystery of the Uchiha massacre if the details are kept confidential. I mean, I just need something from Sakura that shows she wants to know just who Sasuke is. Like, does she never wonder about the abrupt change of attitude from his before and after the massacre and why there are so shockingly one singular Uchiha running around the village when there used to be a ton? If Sakura was a true Sasuke fan, she would have noticed something off from Sasuke, like straight off the bat. And before anyone claims that Sakura did know about Sasuke's clan being annihilated, I say she didn't because if she did, Sakura would not have spoken to Sasuke about Naruto and his lack of parents and being an orphan, knowing that Sasuke is also considered an orphan who also lacks parents. And she wouldn't have gotten so hurt and confused when Sasuke called her annoying and that he's sick of her for her remarks. And then when she's contemplating about his words and her hurt feelings, she would have at least given thought to the fact that Sasuke and Naruto are in a similar situation or sympathize with Sasuke. Instead, she empathizes with Naruto and shows us that she doesn't have a clue why Sasuke is the way he is. The most she seems to know about Sasuke is that he likes long hair, and while that's cool and all, it doesn't really give us a glimpse into who Sasuke is. I can concede that after spending some time as teammates, Sakura might have an inkling of Sasuke's motivation because she does figure out he leaves the village, but that alone isn't enough. Then we have Shippuden. Again, Sakura's understanding of Sasuke is still limited. She doesn't know why he's doing half the things that he's doing. I forget if at this point she is aware that he's out to kill his brother, but regardless, Sakura is the last one to know anything. And instead of asking questions in order to ease Naruto's pain by the time Sasuke turns full traitor, she sets out to kill Sasuke instead of attempting to understand why he is so unhinged. But more on this subject later. Then there is the Boruto series, and it's like nothing has changed between them. I don't know if Sakura understood why Sasuke was a traumatized psycho when he was younger or what, but the impression I get from her, even grown with with a kid is that she's happy not to stir the pot. Even when Sadara asks about her father, Sakura comes across as if she doesn't know a thing about him. Like seriously? You, the obsessive fangirl holding a flaming candle and current wife, can't tell us whether Sasuke wore glasses or not. But Naruto, who knew him for the same amount of time that you did, knows with his whole chest that Sasuke did not wear glasses? Something is not adding up. While Sakura knows some things about Sasuke, I bet you the number of things Genin Sasuke knows about Sakura can fit in one hand. One, she's obviously got a crush on him with romantic intentions. Two, she's intelligent and has good chakra control. Three, she's not too bad at Genjutsu maybe. Four, not as strong as he or Naruto. And five, she's got pink hair. I know the focus of the series is mostly on Naruto and the ninja world, but from the bit of character interactions between the two of them, Sasuke doesn't know anything about Sakura's likes, dislikes, aspirations, motivations, dreams, etc. If it doesn't involve him, he doesn't know about it. And at no point in the manga do we see Sasuke attempt to get to know Sakura. There's no canon evidence of him asking Sakura any questions about herself. And when he does have the chance during the wave arc when they were learning how to walk on trees, Sasuke refused to ask Sakura for help and instead asked Naruto, whom he had a grudging rivalry with. Imagine that, the rival over the girl who would do anything and help you out in any way. If anyone can point out in the manga of Sasuke trying to get to know Sakura, please let me know because I. I have found nothing. It just feels like Sasuke knew Karin better and they had less time together than Sakura. I'm rereading the manga right now and overanalyzing any and all panels that Sasuke and Sakura interact together with and yet I get nothing from this boy. Which is fair because he is not in a state of mind to be thinking about romance but even as teammates we get nothing from Sasuke. Hell, I'm confident that if Sakura wasn't his teammate he wouldn't have even noticed that she existed. In Shippuden she's not even on his mind period. When he meets her the first time 
time, no mention, no thought. The second time, he just tells her she might be useful because she's a healer, something I assume he hurt through the grapevine. Not that it matters because then he attempted to kill her for realsies. And finally, in the war arc, this boy is hella disrespectful and makes no attempt for anything soccer related aside from belittling her. I know people go gaga for when he caught her when she like fell after helping him go through a dimension, but that kind of just means nothing after that genjutsu he put her through after the whole fact. Even after all that, towards the end, he still didn't want her to follow him on his journey of redemption. So Sasuke, little to zero interest in getting to know Sakura and hardly any knowledge of her outside of her healing abilities. All throughout their Genin days, it's very obvious that Sakura has a huge crush on Sasuke that almost, I want to say, borders on obsession. This fact is the running gag for Sakura's character in the whole of the series, and sadly, it's what mainly ends up defining her. From Sasuke's side of things, his friendship towards her is less than his friendship for Naruto, and even that bromance was toxic. Most of their interactions are one-sided with Sakura doing the reacting. Sasuke, if he can help it, tends not to want to do much with Sakura outside of their teammate dynamic. So here's some examples. In the beginning, of the manga, Sakura tries budding up with Sasuke by bashing Naruto. He calls her annoying and is sickened by her. Complete fail. Sakura also tries to get Sasuke to give up during the bell test. He tries telling her about himself a little bit so she can understand why he can't give up, but Sakura doesn't understand. Utter fail. Wave arc. Not much one-on-one -on -one interaction aside from when Sasuke died and Sakura wept over him. Most of the emotional reaction comes from Sakura. We hardly see Sasuke spare her much thought other than that she's heavy because she's leaning on him. The tuning exams. Sasuke does notice that Sakura seems depressed in the beginning of the exams, and honestly, I think that's why he compliments her skills when they arrive at the tuning test building. I will give Sasuke some credit that he was aware enough to maybe guess that the reason Sakura seemed so down was because maybe she didn't think she stood a chance in the exams. At least that's the implication I get from Sakura when she says his name. If it's true, kudos to Sasuke for thinking about Sakura and her feelings for once. It doesn't have to be romantic, but it is a team player. Sasuke also begins acting more like a teammate during the forest of death scene when they're up against Orochimaru. And I know some people will go bananas when he wakes up during the curse seal and tries to off Zaku for hurting Sakura. But honestly, even Sakura realizes that it's more to do with Sasuke's lust for that new power that he has rather than payback for hurting Sakura. The hug scene was cute, I'll admit. And we're so starved for any Sasu Saku that even this bare minimum feels like a buffet. Of course, this later ends and we're back to finding Sasuke standoffish and finding Sakura annoying. So basically this pattern continues well throughout the end of the Naruto part one. We don't even gotta mention Shippuden. Sasuke has little regard for Sakura as a former teammate. The most he does towards her is say like a half ass sorry and then he dips. In chapter 700 and Boruto, suddenly Sasuke is married to Sakura and to this day, no matter how much Studio Peria tries to slice it, Sasuke's sudden marriage to Sakura is not explained or justified in any way because he still keeps her at arm's length and treats her kind of distantly. No amount of my wife is going to make up for the fact that he barely touches her. You don't gotta give me a sex scene, but a tender look, a small hand touch to her hand or face, a hug, a kiss on the cheek, something that can at least convince me that he does kind of like her as a woman. Hell, even a smile towards her will do. Instead, the animators, writers, and manga artists, Kishimoto himself, do everything in their power to make it seem as if Sasuke is only with Sakura because he was just tired of her chasing him, not because his character would naturally gravitate towards her in any type of attraction that isn't platonic. Which brings me to... So I technically addressed this section in the previous one, but here it is again. Sasuke does not have any focus, any ambition on anything that does not pertain in getting stronger and killing his brother. Like this boy couldn't even get along with Naruto or attempt to be a decent enough teammate to actually work together. What makes the fangirls think that he had any low key interest in Sakura as anything more than a teammate? Aside from the fact that Sakura herself is a typical fangirl and Sasuke does not appreciate the fan club that follows him, just because Kishimoto drew them blush lines does not mean Sasuke is blushing when Sakura hugs him. It could be. I'll concede that there is a possibility, but considering his actions before and after and what we know of Sasuke's character all throughout pre Shippuden, pretty much gives us canonical contextual support for the argument that him blushing because he likes her is a stretch and that it's more probable Sasuke is flushed from exertion or blushing from embarrassment since he's not a touchy-feely person. The actions that he does exhibit when he interacts with Sakura is platonic. And I know it's really fun to think otherwise and speculate, but the canon truth of the matter is that Sasuke is not mentally or emotionally even there to think 
think about anyone but himself and avenging his clan. The trauma he went through is deep. Not even Naruto could make a difference enough for Sasuke to stay in Konoha. It's what Sasuke has stated so many times already. It's what you see his actions lead up to, and just because he said thank you to Sakura before he left the village does not mean he was into her like that. I know a lot of people think the scene is cute, but can we look at it again and realize this boy really knocked this girl out in the middle of the night and left her alone, defenseless. Anyone could have harmed her in such a vulnerable state. That's not okay and just shows a complete lack of forethought when it comes to Sakura. Aside from that time when Sasuke acknowledged her strengths prior to the start of the training exams, Sasuke is generally a plague on Sakura's self-esteem. Any crumb or morsel of confidence she gains quickly wilts under his apathetic gaze. The number of times he calls her annoying and literally disregards her kindness is way too much for a girl who values his opinion and regard way too much. I know some people want to view his, you're annoying, to Shikamaru's troublesome in regards to Tamari, but there is a vast difference between the two. Shikamaru at no point belittles Tamari or disrespects her as a woman and shinobi. You can also see that Tamari does not take his comments to heart, unlike our girl Sakura, who is always devastated by Sasuke's words. The first time Sasuke calls her annoying slash sickening was justifiable because Sakura did say some things that were way out of line. But since then, there was no reason for his words to be followed up by a straight assault if you're trying to look at this through a romantic lens. And can we look at that scene from the manga when the infinite Tsukuyomi happened and Sakura wanted to know what was going on outside of the Sasuno and Sasuke straight disrespected her for worrying about everyone else? That motherfucker really did that. And he disrespected Kakashi for siding with Sakura and said, you're the same as Sakura now. Bitch, what do you mean? Sasuke was straight foul for that. You can just see his complete disregard for Sakura and his time that he's forced to interact with her. And it pains me that Sakura fans see nothing wrong with Sasuke's behavior. And a not so fun fact, a good portion of Sasu Saku fans are actually hella young, like straight 14 years old to young 20 somethings. The ripe age that older predators usually tend to go for. It's concerning that behavior like Sasuke's is excused and seen as romantic when in reality it's problematic and toxic and if impressionable fans find this behavior normal, I shudder to think what they would allow in real life. No one should ever have to disrespect someone like that. And Sakura was his teammate. She was not just some random nobody for him to even get so offended by. He even treated Karin better than Sakura and he tried to kill her too. Sasuke didn't even care when Sakura got stabbed by Madara, which Sakura notes with sadness. Then when the Kaguya ordeal is finally over, Sasuke straight up stabs her chest into a genjutsu sleep and claims he sees no reason she should love him and he has no reason to love her as well. And he calls her annoying as well. Bruh, literally, after all they've been through, like what the fuck, bruh? And I don't know about some people, but I find it embarrassing to keep chasing someone when they make it absolutely clear they have no interest in you, which Sasuke makes abundantly clear. Sasuke can empathize with Sakura's love for him to a point because he thinks of his family when Kakashi mentions that she loves you so much it's breaking her heart. But Sasuke merely thinks of it as a failed pass and chains that he needs to break. It's nothing really more deep than it really is. So to reiterate my point, Sasuke is terrible for Sakura's self-esteem, hardly respects her as a teammate and a ninja, and when she does something impressive, he refuses to acknowledge it. Or if he does, it's kind of backhanded. This particular point has always driven me crazy for the entirety of the series because he never acknowledges her strength and her new abilities. At most, Sasuke notices that Sakura is smart, but he never acknowledges anything else or tells her about it aside from that one time from the training exams. 700 chapters and I got one page from pre shippuden Like, come on. Especially after all that problematic crap that he's pulled. Like, I had always hoped, at the very least, that Sasuke would be impressed with Sakura's prowess as a healer, or her summons, her super strength, or her Byakugo, or acknowledge her improvement or something. But no, I never get that, and instead he continues to disregard and belittle Sakura's entire existence. This is the only thing I have ever wanted from Sasuke for Sakura and that shit just never happened. Some people would argue that he mentioned Sakura, his wife, is not weak in Boruto and I'm just like, and? So what? The point of all of that was for bitch ass Shippuden and Sasuke to realize that he had underestimated Sakura. I don't want older Sasuke who continues to avoid older Sakura to tell us what we already know. It just feels a little too late for that, especially with his behavior in Boruto, but that's a topic point for later. 
This is an old tried and true classic point for why Sasu Saku is toxic, Sasuke's behavior aside. Sakura really planned to unalive Sasuke so Naruto didn't have to suffer the burden of their shared promise. Her love for Sasuke didn't really hold up well against all that Naruto did for her. Her confession didn't work so the only way to save Naruto was for her to take Sasuke out. It's a cute thought, definitely wasn't going to work, but that's what her endgame was. Was she going to do it? Who knows, because for no reason Sasuke was legit about to kill Sakura. I can't even give the excuse that he discovered her true motive because as far as Sasuke knows, Sakura is the same old girl who holds a delusional burning candle for him. He didn't even let her finish killing Karin to prove herself. Boy straight up meant to nerf her ass. Kakashi even confirmed this for us. He really meant to kill her. Like for realsies, twice. If Kakashi hadn't intervened or Naruto swooped in and saved her Minato style, then Sakura would be gone. There's a difference between enemies to lovers and whatever the fuck was going on here. At least the enemy respects his enemy and wants to take him down. This shit between Sakura and Sasuke is just messy, embarrassing for Sakura and straight up confirms that Sasuke does not have romantic hidden feelings for Sakura. I already mentioned this previously, but I thought I might as well highlight how unnecessary this traumatic genjutsu was. You couldn't have Sakura simply look at Sasuke's eyes and then fall asleep? Like, why did the vision have to be him attacking her in the chest? Like, some would even say that Sasuke straight up broke Sakura's heart if you want to be symbolic about the gesture. But that genjutsu stab was so unnecessary. Like, why is it that Sasuke always has to put his hands on Sakura to make her fall asleep? Like, that shit ain't cute. The first time I could understand because he was young and still trying to navigate his skills, but as an older Sasuke? Come on. Especially after she poured her whole heart to him and he rejected her. And then after that, Kakashi even tried explaining to Sasuke about Sakura's feelings and Sasuke also rejected that. Like bro, that shit is straight up whack. Karin was a character that I hated when she was first introduced. Back then, I was still hopeful for Sakura that she would end up with Sasuke, despite all of the reasons why they were better off not ending up together. One of the secondary reasons I hated Karin was because she held a level of respect from Sasuke that he had never shown to Sakura. And Karin was also a Sasuke fangirl. This girl did the most and acted with the most embarrassing moments, and yet the patience Sasuke had with her was unbelievable. Like, he doesn't call her annoying or belittles her despite her obvious attempts at trying to seduce him. You would think he would tell her to knock it off, but he just doesn't. Instead, he makes Suigetsu even apologize to Karin sometimes for annoying her if she gets too rowdy. Like, bruh, Sasuke even goes out of his way to save Karin after she's been caught by the Amaratsu fire, which at that point, she could have easily been a lost cause. Instead, Sasuke stays and puts the rest of Team Taka in danger just to see if he can tame the fire and save Karin. Like, this is just, I am, I'm speechless. I think the only time he says something mean to her is when she gets taken as hostage by Donzo and then he tells her she's a burden if she can be taken as hostage. It's no wonder Karin was really shocked by Sasuke's words because he's never spoken so callously like that to her. I don't blame her at all for her shock. Like hell, even when she has the flashback to when she first met Sasuke, the boy was straight smile smirking at her. Sasuke has never done that to Sakura. In fact, I think he still doesn't smile at Sakura. I can kind of see him do so when he does the forehead poke so I can maybe give you that one. But he never smiles at Sakura at any other time in Boruto or in the Sasuke Retsuden novel. Like, I was so shocked when I read that flashback when it first came out because seeing Sasuke smile is so out of character for him after the massacre. And he just did that to Karin when they were literal strangers. It took Sakura, a whole war, and Naruto and Sasuke blowing their arms off to even get that smirk at the very end of the series. Like, bruh, he even apologizes to Karin unprompted after she declares that she will never forgive him after stabbing her and wanting to have her offed. Again, it takes a whole ass brawl and his arm getting blown off for Sasuke to finally apologize to Sakura for all that he's put her through. Which goes to show you, Sasuke does not regard Sakura with any modicum of respect. And it always makes me so angry when people brush aside his behavior towards her as if it were the typical Sundur boy pulling the pigtails of the girl that he likes type of behavior. That shit is not okay or cute at all. Also for the record, I don't hate Karin anymore. In fact, I would have loved if her character had been given more exploration 
attention because the reveal that she is an Uzumaki and her chakra chains is a big deal considering she and Naruto are the only remaining Uzumakis alive in the entire Naruto verse. Like how are we not exploring that? And the fact that she doesn't have her own kid is also just so criminal. She should be repopulating the Uzumaki line with her signature red hair, vitality, and unique chakra. And the way Studio Perry just straight up disrespects her character in Boruto is a hill that I will always die on. After all that trauma and ordeal that Sasuke has put Sakura through, Sakura still wanted to follow after Sasuke. I can excuse the first time she did it because she was so young and so in love and had no idea what the implications of her actions would lead to, but now? Granted, she wouldn't be considered a traitor if she left, but considering the hell Sasuke put her through, chasing after Sasuke again looks pathetic and just regresses all of the character growth that she stubbornly fought for. Not to mention confessing her feelings again felt so out of character after ever everything that happened. I think the Sakura novel mentions that she would chase after Sasuke no matter what. And correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, if that's not the case, but that's what I remember somebody mentioning, which I have the book, by the way, but I refuse to read it because it's just too pathetic and I just can't deal with the sadness. Not to mention it's also non-canon, so thank God for small favors. If a woman has to chase after a man, I can guarantee that the happily ever after that comes from such a union will result in misery for the woman because the guy was never the one putting forth effort to woo her and convince her that he was worthy of her. It shows the man's lack of care and devotion to the woman. This would be a different story if the man reciprocated and proved to the woman that he had been worth all the chasing. But in the case of Sasu Saku, Sasuke never shows Sakura that he was actually worth it, nor does he provide anything for Sakura aside from the sperm used to create Sarada. More on this point later. Is it just me, but are we all forgetting the point of the forehead poke? Between Itachi and Sasuke, it symbolized Itachi's care and affection for his younger brother, but also the distance that he had to put Sasuke through. To them, it makes sense that the forehead poke would mean more than what it actually was. Now, in the context of Sasuke and Sakura, when he used it on Sakura, while cute and clever on Kishimoto's part, it was also sad because, once again, this would be a theme between them, a distance that would just never disappear. Even though Sasuke knew Itachi meant well, he hated the distance that would always appear between them. What makes Sasuke think it would be okay with Sakura? That she wouldn't mind the distance that would always be plaguing their relationship. And I'm using the word relationship very loosely here. Let me know if you have any other thoughts on the subject because I know this had the potential of being cute if Sasuke was actually present in Sakura's life in Boruto. The fact that he's not twists the meaning of the forehead poke to be something more melancholic. Also, as an aside, can I point out that in Boruto, when Sarada asks Sakura if they've kissed and instead of looking like they have or even embarrassed by the fact that they had, Sakura tells Sarada that she thought of something nicer than a kiss, which is the friggin' forehead poke. You're telling me that forehead poke was nicer than a kiss from your precious Sasuke-kun who barely shows you an ounce of warmth? Like, bruh, I just can't. Like, I just cannot even. Listen, it's very well known in Boruto that Sakura had to do all the chasing with Sasuke, and you already know my opinion on the woman doing the chasing with no reciprocation. And no, a child is not a sign of reciprocation, y'all. If the gender roles were reversed, with Sakura showing clear signs of apathy and rejection and disinterest numerous times to a love-obsessed Sasuke, weird words to string together, I admit, the Sasu-Saku ship would be considered creepy and predatory. But since certain individuals want to hail Sakura's actions as the greatest thing Sakura can do, then why? Why on earth is it wrong for Naruto to not do the same for Sakura? Why does he have to get over his feelings for her when he's the main fucking character who did so much and suffered emotionally, mentally, and physically for everyone in the whole Naruto-verse? If anyone deserves to have their feelings reciprocated, it's fucking Naruto. And Naruto is the type of person who won't even force Sakura to reciprocate his feelings because he wants her to be happy. And that, my sparkling individuals, is true fucking love. Love is not selfish. I know most of this is the writers and Kishimoto's fault for deciding that Sakura might as well stick to Sasuke since she's done so for the whole series and it would make her a terrible character apparently if she got with Naruto when Hinata has been pining for him for so long. Like bitch what? 
Why can't Sakura and Hinata get over their crushes? Why does it have to be Naruto who has to give up? And why does Sasuke have to settle for someone he's clearly not interested in? I can't stand the hypocrisy and double standard. The whole point of Sakura's character was to grow from her Kenning days and become someone who can stand beside Naruto and Sasuke and hold her own. And as much as I love her and will drop kick a hoe who talks shit about her, even I can see she barely scraped by at the very end because Kishimoto just had to pull that reincarnation bullshit and undermine underdog and hard work story. Now they're making it seem as if the whole point of Sakura's successful character growth was because she waited and eventually got Sasuke in the end and maybe got a little bit strong in the end too. Like how did she win with that when the man is never around? Sasuke is the embodiment of the dad that went out for milk and never came back trope. Which brings me to... If Sasusaku was supposed to be the correct way for the characters to pair up, then why does it seem like Sasuke can barely stand to be around his family? He hardly mentions them and can never stay long enough to appreciate what they represent. Even though I would have preferred for Naruto and Sakura to be the canon and pairing, if I was forced to write how Sasuke and Sakura's life after the events of Naruto Shippuden would have been as a married couple, this whole deputy dad would not have been it. Sakura is basically a single mother in the Boruto series. Sarada has never met her father in her 12 to 13 years of living. Like, look how cute this little girl is. How can you not want to be around her and love her forever? Why is it that when Sasuke even realized that he was staring at his daughter, who he hasn't seen in ages, doesn't he at least look like he likes her? He looks so apathetic and instead asks why she's around. Same with Sakura when Sakura went after Sarada. All Sasuke says when he sees his supposed precious wife and daughter is why are they there? Even in the new Sasuke Retsuda novel when Sakura first shows up, all he says is why is she there? Like bro what? The boy never looks as if he is happy to see her or be near her or anything. I know a lot of Sasusaku fans will take the moment of Sasuke stopping that one prisoner friend of his from touching her hair as like a win as well as when he gives her a ring when Naruto and Kuronai both have rings. Cue the retconning in an effort to hide their shitty writing but considering that's all Sasuke does it's actually just the bare minimum because why get jealous when you're never around your wife's Sasuke? Sasuke. I swear if by the end of this damn novel Sasuke doesn't decide to finally stay home with Sakura and raise Sarada as he should and kiss the damn woman and give her some verbal or facial declaration of love, I will forever die on the hill that this canon pairing is utter toxic trash and should only be shipped in fanfiction land. If you still doubt me, Sakura doesn't even have a wedding photo of the two of them. I'm convinced of this because if she did, there is no way she would have used an old photo of a teen Sasuke. Teen Sasuke, by the way, like Sakura does not even have a recent photo of this man. I just, I can't. What's even more hilarious is the fact that she taped her own picture over that of Karin's and she like fixed it and put it into the photo frame. Like. Sakura, that was so embarrassing of you to do and it just really shows what kind of insecure woman they've made Sakura out to be. The fact that Kishimoto drew this baby mama drama over Sarada and made Sarada so physically similar to Karin is hilarious because why antagonize what is supposed to be a perfect ship where Sasuke obviously lures Sakura OMG. Seriously y'all, Sarada is straight Karin aesthetic. Glasses, which by the way, why make Sarada have poor eyesight and wear glasses when no Uchiha and Haruno is seen or known to wear eyeglasses. If this isn't some throwback to Kishimoto originally wanting Karin as endgame, I don't know what is. Thigh high shoes, shorty shorts. Even as a child, Sarada had on these cute, conservative, preppy, academic professor wear that seems more Karin reminiscent than Haruno or Uchiha. Hell, even Sakura decided to go Karin with that triangle exposed belly button, which the old Sakura style never had. And I know some people will be like, it's because Karin is the auntie who delivered Sarada and gave the glasses and is friends with Sakura. But Miss Girl stopped. Sarada didn't even know Karin existed and Sakura most likely hasn't spoken to the woman since she delivered the birth. There was no need to go hardcore Karin aesthetic. You can just tell that the studio is scrambling to justify why this pairing is so badly written and just a mess and a half. At every opportunity they try to shoehorn that's my wife or that's my husband or you're your mom's kid or have Karin always deny that she has any involvement with Sarada other than delivering her. Like we get it guys stop. You don't have to keep telling us something so obvious. Like after a while it just becomes a little bit suspicious like they're hiding something. And y'all know what they say about people who keep forcing a point of view over and over. It's because they want to believe it to be true themselves. If Sasusaku was really so perfect there would be no need for all this drama.
What I found so bizarre, aside from all of the baby mama drama Kishimoto decided to throw at us because Studio Period is greedy and owns his eyes, and this was his way of being chaotic and sticking it to them, is the fact that Sarada was the one asking these hard-hitting questions, which I guess were supposed to put the rumors and speculation to rest, but instead only fueled the confusion and discourse, if you're on this side of the fandom, that is. Sarada, a girl after my own heart, asked the important question of, how can you be so sure that your heart is connected to moms, which by itself is another irritating instant of people trying to force Sakura onto Sasuke because that question had an obvious answer. We wouldn't need this constant question being asked and the answer always being vague to satisfy those who deal with the bare minimum. And I don't know about some of y'all, but if Sasuke was my husband and he did all of that shit with me, his ass would have been out the door. I need that verbal confirmation, that physical affection, that emotional confirmation. You ain't gotta be spiritual, but I need some thing that shows me that you are putting in the work for this relationship because if it's just me loving myself if it's just me alone in bed for years without a ring without a current picture of you with, without you ever even seeing your baby before she's grown like bitch I might as well be single and I have to take care of a household and a child and he sees the best friend more than he does me or the kid could not be me I would not be made boo boo the clown like a fine example of the major contrast of Sasuke's bare minimum is if Lee or Naruto had had been Sakura's husband. Those boys would have built Sakura a house from scratch, would constantly be showing her affection, give her flowers, show her emotional support, gladly looked after the kids to give her spa days, and just basically sing Sakura's praises to everyone and showed us all how to properly treat your wife, which goes to show you that if he wanted to, he would. Men will be and do so much for the girl that they want. And if you're not that girl, then you're sadly a Sakura receiving the bare minimum because Studio Periot said so and they needed a next generation cast for Boruto. But back to the point of Sadara's question, which Sasuke answers to, yeah, as in my heart is connected to Sakura's because we have you, which normally if this had been a somewhat healthy pairing would have been an aw moment because it implies that Sarada is the proof of their love for each other, you know, as it ideally should be, but here's why I don't see it in that context. Sasuke's behavior in Boruto has shown me that he does not care a whit about Sarada and actually being there for her. Instead, it seems like he's more into Boruto and his development instead of his own daughters. Sarada is supposed to be this precious darling that means the world to him, but instead, because we have you, sinisterly implies to me that Sasuke's feelings are only connected to Sakura's because they had Sarada. Meaning, if she hadn't been born, Sasuke wouldn't have bothered with his bare minimum sham of a fatherhood and husbandhood. And I know people are going to point out that Sasuke is the way he is because he's been traumatized, which is why he's bare minimum. But if that were the case, fatherhood and marrying someone else is the worst way to cope with that. Go to therapy, man. Get yourself right before you take on these huge responsibilities. I know another argument for this is Sasuke's super secret saving the world mission, but there are ways to circumvent that, like having a super secret long-term Anbu team to do reconnaissance. Sasuke doesn't have to shoulder everything by himself. At this point, he's just being selfish because his life is not his own anymore. He has a wife and a kid who need him as much as the world, the village, and Naruto need him. Sasuke chose to be a deadbeat dad. No one forced that on him. Enough said. Literally every other ship has proof of some affection that they have for each other. Kisses we've seen, weddings, wedding photos, hugging, touching, flirting, playful fighting, anything that would imply chemistry basically. Sasuke, not once, has ever willingly touched Sakura in a romantic gesture. Making sure she doesn't fall doesn't count because not soon after, this bit says the coldest lines towards her and then Genjutsu stabs her. The poke isn't exactly a declaration of love either. In Retsudan, I admit that I let Sasuke's bare minimum hand holding to put the ring on Sakura it like get to me. Then I remembered that he had never given Sakura any rings before or jewelry because otherwise she would have worn that shit hardcore. And he genuinely seemed baffled that couples have to be around each other constantly. Like bitch, what do you mean? You're confused about that. Sasuke, you're the worst. And then after the whole Sarada Gaiden, like towards the very end when Sakura goes in for a kiss, Sasuke straight up avoids that shit as if she were a typical fangirl. Bitch, that's your wife. And Sakura says again, as if that's a regular occurrence. 
Sasuke, I think, smirks in the next panel. I could be wrong because Kishimoto just has to make it so fucking subtle. But if he's making the Mona Lisa smirk, then it can either be that he's like, haha, I'm being cute and teasing you, or another kiss successfully dodged. And considering what Kishimoto has shown of Sasuke's personality so far in like in Boruto, I'm inclined to believe the latter was the intention for the smirk. Like, I just literally can't, y'all. This is such an off pairing. It's so much worse than Naruto and Hinata, and that shit was terrible too. Supposedly, Sasuke wanted to rebuild his clan after gaining vengeance and whatnot, but he literally only had one kid with Sakura. One he barely even remembers because he was about to nerf Sadura's ass, and Naruto, who doesn't even have to do that, has like two kids. Three technically if you count Kawaki, who Naruto apparently dotes on more than his own son. Like at the very least, Sarada should have had a twin, or Sakura should have had like another bun in that oven, preferably one with pink hair. Like I still feel cheated about that. But anyways, Mr. Last of his family over here is not even interested in making sure there's more Uchiha's in the world. Sakura should have been the one with the multiple kids, but Sasuke just honestly seems so done with her, so resigned and literally escapes on his missions to escape from being with Sakura more than necessary. And that, dear sparkling individuals, is sad. If it wasn't for Sadara, I would have believed that Sasuke was Sakura's long lost roommate who will occasionally show up to remind everyone that he's alive like once every 10 years. So here's some minor things that I just really wanted to quickly point out. This family portrait is terrible. Why does Sasuke look like he's ready to dip as soon as the flash happens? Like, look how sexy your wife is. Look how cute and mini Karin like your daughter looks. These are supposed to be the best years of your family life because they only happen once and that stage in a child's life is super crucial in building relationships. Exhibit XX in evidence of why Sasuke is bare minimum and Sasusaku is a toxic canon pairing. I was also hoping that the Sasuke Retsuda novel would show me that Sasuke isn't so bare minimum, but I should have known better. I can at least give the you didn't cheat ribbon, which is standard bare minimum stuff. Like I am still reeling that he is genuinely baffled that couples have to spend time together. I'm figuratively screaming about that guys. Also, what kind of mid low tier ring is that? You don't have to give Sakura diamonds, though you should, but at least make the ring prettier. And the fact that Sakura is in her happy place because he gave her a ring and Sasuke is like, why are you being weird about that? Makes me want to slap him so so hard. I can't say I have much hopes for this novel and the only way this novel really redeems their relationship is if Sasuke decides to head home to Konoha with Sakura willingly and stay there and actually be there for her instead of dipping whenever. I am loving every panel of Sakura though, I will admit that. She is so beautiful, though I do resent uh, the fact that when they draw her, they just for whatever reason seem to make her uglier with the lines around her eyes and they didn't even do that for Tsunade and Mai and they are way older than Sakura, which just goes to show you how Sakura can ever freaking win anything. Last point, Sakura never seems like herself whenever she's around Sasuke. She's always trying to be patient or become more subdued when she's around him, which is so sad because the Sakura we all know is an Aries and she acts like it. No fucks given, especially if people are trying her. Yeah, she has her polite and ladylike moments, but she's a bubbly girl with cutesy moments. Like she smiles, grins, laughs. She is cheerful. She's very kind, selfless, loves a little bit of chaos and can definitely be scary when her temper is messed with. But with Sasuke, we never see that. She's always somber, sorrowful, hurt, sad, melancholic, resigned, etc. I rarely see her smile around Sasuke, and when she does, a frown usually follows after that, or this look of resignation that Kishimoto always weirdly draws on her face in Boruto. I don't know about you guys, but I just can't stand to see Sakura like this. Girls should never not be themselves when they're around the people they love. So in conclusion, and this is directed at Studio Perriot, if you have to add ship moments in a story post ending to justify the pairing, that means it was never a good ship to begin with. And as a writer, I will die on that hill. And that's that on that. This concludes the video y'all. Boy was this video a long one, longer than the Naruto and Hinata one even. I didn't even mention a few minor points because it was just getting way too long, but I'm sure I'll sprinkle it in a comment here and there. What I want people to get from this video is that yes, you 
can ship Sasuke and Sakura together if you want. From outside looking in, it does look like a cute couple. But to be mindful that Ken and Sasuke was not in love with Sakura, nor did he have romantic intentions towards Sakura, and that his behavior towards Sakura was abominable and should not be something that any woman in real life should ever have to tolerate. Personally, I don't care for this ship at all. I would have much preferred if Sakura remained single or married Naruto, or Mary Lee, or even Kakashi. Even though old boy neglected her as a student, he was a decent comrade towards her and really saved her multiple times and supports her in whatever she wants to do, whether that included Sasuke or anything else. Sasuke should have remained single or maybe with Karin, who is better equipped to deal with his bullshit and would not let him get away with it, or even with Naruto, as some Narusasu shippers would prefer. Sadly, we get Boruto, and the only things I can tolerate from that is Sarada and the children of Inoshika Show, and also Sakura's small glimpses of badassery. But the fact that they still made her have short hair when she was a fucking babe with her long hair makes me so angry. But that's a minor complaint about my personal preference. Any hoodles, thanks for sticking with me this far into the video. You sparkling individuals are seriously the greatest. My artwork will be available to view on Instagram and DeviantArt. If you're curious about my webcomics, book novels in the work, and video projects here on this channel, then watch out for a future video that I plan to make to help me organize my creative projects. Hopefully once I get access to the community, tab on YouTube, I can better let you guys know what's up. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and allowed it to reach 700 subs. It's nice to know that there are individuals out there who like my sort of content. Let me know in the comments what you think of today's video and whether you disagree or agree with me. Remember not to be too unhinged when you disagree. I don't particularly feel like writing a mini essay in the comments when my video pretty much explained plenty. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell until it's solid so you can be notified when I upload my next great thing. Thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, cheers.